probably wasn't a pretty bill, but the four points are all that matters, and they're a side that kept kept on coming. But every time they got close, you were able to just pull away and, and do enough to win. Yeah, look, it's really a really hard one to judge. You know, I'm fairly critical of what we did today, but in the end, we won. Um, and maybe it's, you know, I, I talk to the players about respecting the opposition and making sure that they play the game to the full. Maybe I had different expectations. 15 19 is not a bad day at the office in terms of getting the ball forward and shooting um, on goal. We've got some work to do. Perth, you know, I've watched them two or three times and they've probably played similar to that where they've stayed with opposition and they just get blown away in little patches. So I thought it was ugly, it was frustrating, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we win by 19 points by kicking 15 goals 19. So. You know, we've got to take the good with the bad. Did they get their goals a little bit too easily a lot of the time for, for your liking? Uh, you're being way too kind by saying a little <laughs> bit easy. Look, no. Look, since pressing <coughs> and zones and all of that stuff has come into play, um, we've always been a side that suffer from sides getting out the back because we do get up the ground quite aggressively. Um, so that's not uncommon. Um, what I try to explain to people who, who don't understand that mechanism is that we can pick those players up and in the times that we were playing that type of defence one on one, um, we're getting as many points scored against us as we are now at 14 goals, 6 or whatever it was, it's probably 20 scoring shots, I'd take 20 scoring shots against every week 10-10 um, 11-9 but 14-6 it's it was the ease of them and you know, his stat was very good today, but I think he probably kicked five from the goal line with no one on him. Um, but, you know, they have to get through it and, and use the ball well. Um, so, yeah. But 20 scoring shots to 35 means we, we've had a significant victory. You knew Rudy was talented. Did you think he had a six-goal haul in him in his third game for the club? Um, look, we've been really patient in understanding where Rudy's been through the pre-season. Um, do I think that's the sort of performance that Rudy could give offensively? Yes, that's why we wanted to get him here. I think he's as talented as any other forward playing in the competition. Um, whether it's three games in, five games in, three and a half years in, I don't care, really. He was good today on the offensive side. He, like all of us, has got some work to do on the defensive side, but we're wrapped. Um, you know, we haven't recruited a lot over the off-season. Um, you know, but generally, you just back our own kids in. But I would have thought that having Simpson and Riddick over the last three or four weeks have been, you know, they've been good choices for us and, and they're having, having a significant impact on the game. You recruited him because he's got that talent and he's shown it in glimpses in his time at Swans, but he's never been able to string it together for very long. What, what, why is he able to now? What, what, what have you done to sort of be able to get that out of him? Well, we need to keep it in perspective. He's played three games, um, and he was OK in the first couple, um, and he was better today. Um, I think sometimes when you've got players in your own backyard, you can find things that they do wrong and probably focus on, on that and, and control on the negatives, and I'd probably do the same with a lot of our players. Um, what we see in Rudy from an opposition coach is all the positives he does. Um, so I think that part of the secret to coaching people like Rudy, and this isn't a Bill Monaghan thing, is to keep believing and having faith. And, you know, Rudy texted me during the week and said, will I play senior footy this week? I nearly fell off my chair. Like, seriously, Rudy, you're two games in, you've been OK. But that's probably symptomatic of what his mindset is as a Swan Districts player. And this isn't a criticism of Greg or Swan District. Is that probably shows that he never was comfortable in in his position and he was always looking over his shoulder as to, you know, and we do the same. Um, every coach does, um, every club does. Um, so you know, it's easy for us to look at the positives and Rudy just needs to continue to work hard. You're happy with the way what you're doing in the ruck is working at the moment, whether it's Simpson or whether it's Hamilton or whether it's Kytel, it, it seems to be working to have that more mobile big man and then you can use either of whichever three isn't in the ruck, you can use them forward or back and it seems to be going pretty well. Yeah, look, it's really hard. Look, the trend across all major competitions are that the the giant ruckman is probably in decline. Um, 
I was told during the week, and it probably doesn't surprise me because I've been a believer in this for a while, but someone who said they've got some hands on stats is the two AFL clubs who are most in decline in clearances are Fremantle and North Melbourne. Mm -hmm. I think they're the two best ruckmen in the, in the AFL. So, um, look, it's working. Does that mean we can't play Sev? Does it mean when Chris is available in a few weeks' time we won't play them? No. The beauty of today with it, and you mentioned Hamilton and Keitel, is um, things weren't going to plan. So Simpson went back and we had someone else play that role. So we've tried to spread the load and, and add versatility in all our positions. So Manning starts back, ends up forward, plays through the midfield. Same with Meadows. And today we're trying to get Nelly, who's had another 40 and and was really good around the clearances. We tried to push him forward to crumb a couple of goals because other than Corey Chalmers, I'm not sure we had anyone who was genuinely crumbing the ball. So it's been something we've focused strongly on. The rucks are part of that, but it'd be, it'd be silly not to think that we're doing that in a range of positions. It was an interesting week for VB because you didn't see him until, until this morning pretty much all week. How important was it for a milestone game like that to, to get a win? because it's pretty tough to celebrate it if you, if you lose. Yeah, we haven't been super with our um, milestone games. And as a coach, I, I get caught between pumping that right up and a bit of rah-rah and, you know, they're being great servants for the club and just go out and do what's normal. And um, guys like VB, and most of the guys are the same, you know, they're not about personal accolades. That's why we love Jay Van Berlo. Um, he would have felt embarrassed today. You know, we had a guest speaker in. He spoke at the lunch beforehand. There was a story that he'd been away all week. VB just likes to get out there and play, and, and he gives you the same effort every week, and we're really proud that he's got to 150 games. So I did ask the players for an effort, but I didn't go over the top asking them for a special effort. But he was... Look, he played his role. Um, he's a pleasure to coach. He's an intelligent person. He's got a good work-life balance um, and football so you know, he's a great role model for everyone at the West Perth Footy Club. I'm sure there's no room for, for sentiment in your policy at selection but it'll be a nice memory for Jay to have to have played his milestone with his brother too. Yeah look we, we often don't talk about that stuff and but to be honest and this is not saying that um, Mitch Van Berlo didn't deserve to play, but it came down to two people to play. It was Mitch or another player, and we couldn't really separate them. So we thought it was best that Mitch had that opportunity for Jay. Jay would have been proud of that. You know, we in Shane Nelson's situation a couple of weeks ago, he was really buoyed by the fact that Scott was playing. Um, we don't give games to anyone who don't who doesn't deserve them. Um, but I can tell you this week it was live ball and we probably did you know, go a little bit sentimental um, because we think that's really good for the fabric of the footy club. Um, we're blessed here. I think there's six groups of brothers across the grades. Um, so, you know, we, we're, a, we're a club who like to promote our own and, and we really value those connections. So it was good to see that um, Mitch was out there today with Jay. Coming back a month, how concerned were you after that South Manor loss and how happy are you now to have won the three games since then and you probably couldn't have responded any better? Yeah, look, that's a difficult question because that's not, as a coach, how I, I view it. It's not how bad we are, how lucky we are. We were poor against South. Um, I'm probably a little bit miffed as to why people say we've been inconsistent this year. Um, we had a horrible game against South Fremantle. Um, we beat East Perth relatively comfortably in round one. We took it right up to Suvi, whose form is outstanding. Um, we're woeful against South. We beat Peel and Swans, who are both going OK, and yet people are saying we're inconsistent. So we were really concerned about the effort we put in against South from on a number of issues, um, and we think we've rectified them to a little bit in the last three weeks. But it's not... I, I just... I just don't look at it the way people in the media or people from outside the inner sanctum do. It's there's a lot of planning and effort put in by coaches and players, and, and you know we we see it way differently to to what might be written in the press. You're pretty confident you can keep the momentum going next week. Oh, we just know it doesn't matter who we play. Like we saw today, um, Perth are 
one and four going in today, and it took a fairly decent effort in the end to shake them off or to hold them off. Or, you know, I, I think Earl could be sitting in his chamber and, um, you know, we took it up to him and could have easily snatched the game. So we don't we don't disrespect anyone, um, whether we're playing the top side or, or someone who may may be struggling for a win. We know he's from Adams a lot of talent. Um, but we're also fairly confident in the knowledge that if we play to our best, that we are competitive. Um, does that mean we win every game? No. Um, does it mean we're in every game? Take the South game out, which is you know, not something that's normal. Generally speaking, we're in most games we play. Yeah.